All right, everyone. Once again, welcome to our Hunger Action Awareness class today. I am sharing my screen. If somebody can let me know in chat if you see my screen right now, that would be wonderful. Should be a big, yep. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, all right. So as I mentioned here, um, today we are talking about hunger action awareness. And the reason that we are is because September is Hunger Action Awareness Month. And I don't want to say that I necessarily enjoy talking about this topic because um, it's an unfortunate thing that this has to be a topic. And it, of course, is a very sensitive topic. But I will say that I am um, very honored to, to talk to you guys about it because it is a big topic in America, and I do enjoy bringing light or um, awareness to the subject because I feel like it is very important, very vital. Um, you know, even if you uh, are not in the boat of um, someone who is suffering from hunger action, you know, it's always really great to be aware of our surroundings and who in your community might be struggling to feed their family and what you can do to help. So those are all things that we're going to talk about today. And then we are going to finish up with a quick and easy slow cooker spaghetti squash bolognese recipe. And the reason that we are doing that recipe is because the color of Hunger Action Awareness Month is orange. So spaghetti squash, it's a little yellow, it's a little orange, depending on which one you pick up. So that's why I went with that. So I got my orange on today um, and just to put that out there, that it is a way to signify um, hunger action awareness. So we're first going to talk about Feeding America. Feeding America is the largest hunger relief organization in the United States. And their mission is that food shouldn't be an impossible choice. Um, that, you know, families or just any individual shouldn't be um, having to think about that choice when they wake up in the morning about whether or not they have enough resources to actually put a meal in front of them. So they are somebody that um, our company partners with um, through other local food banks to help provide to our communities, which we're going to talk more about in a bit. But um, just to put out there what that really means, like how Feeding America is helping um, our country and why. Um, food insecurity is that reason why, all right? And food insecurity is defined by the United States Department of Agriculture as the lack of access at times to enough food for an active, healthy lifestyle. Um, food insecurity is associated with numerous adverse social and health outcomes and is increasingly considered a critical public health issue. So that is a big reason why we are talking about it today through the dietitian team, because, of course, we are all about promoting well-being. And um, so once again, really why we want to try to bring to light um, how different parts of the country are food insecure and what we can do to help with that. I see someone said in chat that Giant is a wonderful supporter of the Bloomsburg food um, cupboard in Bloomsburg and that everyone is so grateful for that. That's wonderful feedback. I'm so glad to hear that for sure. Um, so here are some fast facts about hunger in America. These are taken directly from um, the Feeding America website, that 34 million people in the U.S. are food insecure. 34 million. And out of those 34 million, 9 million children in the U.S. are food insecure. Um, really crazy to think about. 9 million children. 49 million people turned to food programs in 2022. Um, a lot of that being because of the pandemic the high rate of um, unemployment and everything that tied along with that. 100% of U.S. counties have food insecurity. So it really doesn't matter where you live, somebody in that community is most likely struggling with these problems of food insecurity at some point in time. 
So um, once again, more of Hunger in America, some things off of the Feeding America website. Every community in the country, as I just mentioned, is home to families who face hunger. Doesn't matter where you are. But rural communities are especially hard hit by um, hunger. Many households that experience food insecurity do not qualify for federal nutrition programs. And so because of that, they do visit their local food banks and other food pro programs for extra support. Um, so with that, I'm going to hold on here. Um, let's talk about uh, hunger in your community. So I'm going to stop sharing this screen and I'm going to share another one instead here. We're going to look at the Feeding um, America website. So you guys should be able to see that right now. Um, we're in uh, Feeding America's website. Everybody still see that okay? All right. And, um, okay, thank you. So right now we're looking here, I have stats pulled up particularly for Pennsylvania, just because that's where I know a lot of our viewers are, that's where I am, but we can look up other states too, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia. But if you go to the Feeding America's website, there are of course tons of um, different tabs that you can look into for how you can help out, um, research that they've done, what they're doing, in the past, present, and future. But this was one that I really like to highlight for hunger in different states. So here we are, hunger in Pennsylvania, what hunger looks like in Pennsylvania. So in Pennsylvania, one in 11 people face hunger. And to break that down even more, one in eight children face hunger. So if you think about, you know, your kids, your grandkids, the neighbor's kids, and and think about their classroom at school. You know, I know my daughter, there's 22 kids in her class. So at least two, if not three of them, could potentially be affected by hunger. You know, people that she goes to school with every day. So I think that's just really crazy to think about, um, something to keep in, in mind for sure. And, um, they do have further information here um, where, you know, the cost of an average meal in Pennsylvania is a, a little over three, well, a, a good bit over $3, closer to $4. And you can also check out the map, um, the meal gap study that they did. So if we click on this here, give my internet a second. Um, what this does is it gives you the map of the US and then you can click on it by state to see specific counties. So, um, you know, if we click on Pennsylvania here, it's gonna show you the food insecurity rate um, and break that down further. Counties that are impacted a little bit more are gonna be the ones that are darker in green. Um, I will go back here to this that we were just at. Once again, like I said, I know some of you are joining us from um, Maryland. So we'll take a look at hunger in Maryland, fairly similar to Pennsylvania, rather than one in 11, it is one in 10, one in eight children. Um, I think we have some folks on with us from Virginia. So let's take a, a look at that. So down here, one in 12 people, one in 11 children for West Virginia. And then we'll also, sorry, that was Virginia. Let's look at West Virginia, because I know we have some folks in that area joining us too. So even, um, you know, even higher there, one in nine people and one in seven children. So once again, um, just something to keep in mind and, uh, something that you can check out their website if you would like to help in conjunction with Feeding America. If you would like to help through Giant directly here, um, if you pull up our website or if you have our app on the phone, you can actually donate your choice points to local food banks. So um, if you're not familiar with how to do that, I'm going to show you here through the, the website, if you go to your giant choice rewards up here, 
Um, and scroll down. Hold on. Is it not? Am I not logged in? Yeah. Okay. So hmm, it's having a hard time loading. I guess my internet might not be that great. Hold on. Okay. All right, just a second here, guys, and I will bring this up for you. Let me stop sharing a moment and uh, log in. Okay, and then I will reshare. Here we go. Okay. Okay, now you should be able to see um, my, excuse me, see my screen again here. Um, so remember we went to Giant Choice Rewards and we are scrolling down here. Um, and it should, my computer is not loading very well right here, but right here, um, if you, here we go. If you go to my rewards and you can um, look at how to redeem your choice points. And there it gives you different options, you know, so a lot of folks use it on gas, grocery dollars in the store, special offers, but then there is also here the option for charity donation. So for every 100 points you donate, um, that equates to a dollar donation supported to whatever the charity is that we are supporting that month. And right now, um, with Hunger Action Month, we are supporting um, local food banks. So you can pick how much you um, want to donate. I think right now in September, it's a great time to make those donations um, with everybody getting 100 points per class. If you have some to spare, um, this could be a great way to contribute if you would like to. So just wanted to bring that to, um, to light there as an option, all right. And um, so now I wanted to show, let's get into the recipe that we're gonna be talking about today. But thank you guys so much for listening to, um, to that part of our presentation today and um, bringing awareness to hunger in America and in your communities and how you can help if you are able to. So. Um, the recipe that we're making today, that slow cooker spaghetti squash bolognese, um, I just wanted to review how to get to our recipes on our website, just in case you're not familiar. Um, at the top, you go to my shop and you go to recipes and it's going to reroute you to our savory page. Um, and actually, I'm just going to type in spaghetti squash. And then... The recipe will come up from here. Okay, it's right here, our slow cooker spaghetti squash. And one more thing I wanted to show you about the recipe before we dig into um, uh, dig into making it. If we scroll down, um, two really great things. Um, one, this recipe that we're making today does earn a guiding star. If you're not familiar with guiding stars, what that means is that this is a better for you recipe. This is our way to rate both recipes and products in the store as being better for you. So if a product or a recipe doesn't get a star, it doesn't mean that it's not a good recipe or product. It just means that it doesn't have a certain ratio of criteria that we're looking for, which is making sure something has vitamins, minerals, fiber, and omega-3, and less things like added sugar and added sodium artificial colorings and so forth. So this recipe earns one star, which is good. Two stars is better, three is best. So I just wanted to show that here. And then also, if you are interested and you're a online giant shopper, you can always do shop now and it will automatically put all of these ingredients in your cart. So if you are you know, making one of the recipes that we show you guys in class, all of our recipes are linked on our Eventbrite page that you can go there and bring up this recipe, hit shop now, and you got all those recipes in your cart. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing that now. And I'm going to switch over, turn my video um, off here and turn my 
a video on for my ingredients for us to make this recipe. So just bear with me one quick moment here while I do that. Okay, guys. So let me spot that. All right, so right now you should be seeing my ingredients over here, yes? We good over here? Okay, so um, this recipe is super easy. Thank you for the thumbs up and the yes about that. Really easy over here that we're making this in our slow cooker. I've already done some of it for sake of time. So in my slow cooker, I have some ground beef that I have already cooked. So one pound of ground meat um, that you're going to cook on your stovetop first and then put in your slow cooker. I did use beef, but you could absolutely use ground chicken or ground turkey, whatever you prefer. Um, but for this recipe, I kind of like the savoriness of the beef. OK, so that is in my slow cooker here. And then to that, we're going to be adding just a couple of ingredients. So First up, we have here a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. You'll see here that these are our no salt added tomatoes. So um, that's a great quality, especially if you're someone with high blood pressure. A lot of tomato sauces, spaghetti sauces can be very high in sodium. So this is great, no salt added, which is a big reason that right down here, like we were just talking about, um, this product is getting those guiding stars and in particular three guiding stars okay so we're going to add that in here with our ground beef the whole can um let me see what you guys are saying here in chat um i see that you use the fair life you do too it helps with the gi issues yeah so let's talk about um fair life here the recipe calls for one cup of milk. And um, this is my milk of choice because of what you guys are mentioning right now of it being naturally lactose free, okay? It's lactose free because of how it is filtered and also because of how it's filtered, it's going to have less natural sugar in it, okay? There's no added sugar in any of regular cow's milk unless it's you know of course flavored like chocolate all of that um so but because of how it's ultra filtered it cuts back on the natural carbohydrates that is in it so this has about half of the carbs as a regular milk but it also has um more protein okay regular cow's milk has about eight grams of protein this has 13 so just bringing that a light again this is cow's milk okay but it is lactose free higher in protein lower in carbs um i see some of you mentioning that if you can find it on the shelves that's what you get and i hear you we do seem to have a hard time keeping this on the shelf um me in particular i usually buy the one percent especially for a recipe like this but all we have was the fat free it's just something that we we have a hard time keeping up there um, same amount of calcium. I see that question on there. Um, still has the vitamin D, still has the calcium. Um, so a really great option if you are looking for a lactose-free milk product compared to doing something like almond milk or soy milk. Um, not that those options are not okay, but um, if you do prefer a cow's milk, um, then this can be a great way to do it and easy on the tummy with the protein then too and the, the less carbs. Um, so the recipe calls for one cup. So we're gonna pour that in here. And then um, two more ingredients. The recipe calls for garlic and um, oregano. So it calls for minced garlic. I will be honest with you guys, I am a jarred garlic kind of gal. <laughs> But I thought I had some. I don't. That's okay, though. That's how we pivot in recipes, right? So I'm going to be using some garlic powder instead. 
and uh, my spice cabinet is full. I know I have oregano in there, but the Italian seasoning came up front. So totally cool. Just going to use that instead because it has oregano in it um, along with um, some sage, marjoram, and dehydrated garlic anyway. So I'm going to do a tablespoon of each of these. All right, just a minute here. So I'm going to do a tablespoon of the garlic, maybe a little less, okay? And then a tablespoon also of, oh man, my Italian seasoning. There we go, it was new. Um, oh, this smells good, nice and fresh. A tablespoon of the Italian seasoning there, okay? So now let me turn this just a little so you can see here. Just going to go ahead and mix this all together. I will say some of the reviews for this recipe on savory, they're all great reviews. People love it, love the flavor. But some folks did say that they felt like it got a little watery. So some of them um, suggested maybe trying using some tomato paste in here as well. Um, totally up to you. It probably is going to be just very dependent on your spaghetti squash and how big it is. Okay. But there we have that. Um, let me see. I see some questions here in chat. Just a moment. Um, so alternatives to the tomato. Um, so I mean, this is a bolognese sauce, which is usually tomato based, but you could, I mean, you could do uh, this without, like, making it, like, an actual sauce. You know, you could just do some regular veggies in there. Like, I think something like carrots. Like, you could puree maybe your own blend of um, carrots, cauliflower, that kind of thing. Um, I think could work well in there, too. Or, you know, you can just cook. There's lots of um, recipes out there of just cooking spaghetti squash without it being a spaghetti type recipe where you're just loading it up with mixed veggies, um, something like that. I see somebody mentioned cornstarch. Um, yes, that could be a way to thicken it as well if you want. Um, so yes, you could do cornstarch. Now, let's talk about um, our spaghetti squash here. Okay, so spaghetti squash, when it's together like this, you can see I didn't do a good job cutting it in half. But spaghetti squash can be really hard to cut in half because it's a, you know, it's a hearty vegetable, a hearty uh, squash there. So recommendation is to, if you can see here, I poked it with a fork and put it in the microwave for about five to eight minutes, okay? When you do that, it should slice much more easily, which it did for me. I did cut off my bottoms then just so it fit a little bit better in my slow cooker. So microwaved it five to eight minutes, cut off my bottoms, then cut it in half, and then you scrape out the seeds, okay? Um, so I already did this one, but I'll go ahead and do this one too. You're just gonna scoop out the seeds and some of this pulp is in the middle. Um, that's fine to have in there too, but you can scoop, some of it's all like tangled in with the seeds. So sometimes getting a knife in there can help get that out of it. Now you can roast these seeds just like you would if you were, you know, carving a pumpkin and roasting a pumpkin seed. So feel free to hang on to that, or excuse me, to those if you'd like. Okay. Let's see, I am getting out some of that there. We'll pull out these and keep moving along. Okay, so what's in here is gonna be like really fine strands. You could keep digging those out if you like the bigger pieces. I'll kind of show you a comparison here in a moment. But, so I'll use this other piece. If you leave some seeds in there, totally okay. But, um, so for example here, see you can see here some of these thinner pieces, whereas this right here, this is more of the, texture of the spaghetti sauce on the side okay so what you're going to do from there hold on let me grab my hands off here and uh turn my phone a bit 
So what you're going to do from here is now we're just going to put it into our slow cooker. So we want to put it with the cut side down like so. I'm going to scrape a little bit more out of this one. And then you're going to just um, leave it in the slow cooker for about six to eight hours on low. And then you are ready to go. Um, pull the, uh, hold on, I'm just pulling some of these out a little bit. You'll just pull the squash out and then serve the sauce on top, okay? So both there with the cut side down like that. Let me move this out of the way. You guys can see a little bit better. There we go. So there we have it. All right, let me bring myself back on here too. I see some um, folks in uh, chat. There we go. I see some folks in chat are asking about their recipe. I will totally be sending that out with um, the recording link afterwards. And I will show you guys a picture of what this looks like at the end um, too. So I'll include in a picture with that. So it won't be out for a little bit yet. So I can have that finished product for you guys. Um, but I'm so glad to hear that you're loving uh, the classes and the workshops. Let me... Um, let me end the recording here real quick. Does anybody have...